let's talk about Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, I actually reviewed this game before a couple of years ago. And uh, it's probably, it is, the only mistake I ever made in my game reviewing career. It's the only time I can look back and say, oh my god, I was wrong. You see, I, I put that game into a whole bunch of uh, different games. It was like, I think the video was called a Review of Awful Fighting Games. It was like a review of three fighting games, and Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing was one of them. And it is absolutely not a horrible fighting game. This is, in fact, probably the best boxing game I ever played in my life. Um, I can't believe the, what a fool I was reviewing that game, uh, but... Uh, what I said about the game wasn't wrong. I mean, my problem with the game was the fact that the actions are like one frame. Like, every attack is one frame. You know, it's like a tiger handheld game. And it, it, it gives you the illusion of speed, but really it's just poor quality where it's one frame but the fact is this doesn't bother me in the gameplay this doesn't ruin the gameplay at all it actually looks good when you play and even if you don't like the fact that this game has one frame like I didn't what a fool I was uh, you just have to look past that because this is just an amazing fighting game let me explain the mechanics okay there's your regular uh, punching you use A button to punch with the left hand, you use C button to punch with the right hand, and then you use B button to block. If you press B button and either A or C together, you will do an uppercut. Basic controls. Now, the strategy comes into play with the fact that you can also go low, and once you press down and go low, you start punching the body. Now, the strategy here is, of course, when you're punching the body, you can get clipped in the head, but wow. if you're close, you're just going to be just destroying your opponent's body, and there's nothing he can do. Of course, what his, um, his counter to this is, of course, for him to go down, lower himself, and protect his body by pressing B. By holding B, he can protect his body, and then moving away, and what have you. And this is the type of strategy that is absolutely amazing for a Genesis game. And this isn't the only strategy in the game. There's tons of strategies in the game. For example, there is four basic attributes that you have. Power, stamina, speed, and defense. Now, obviously, power is your power. It's how hard you punch. Stamina is how much you can take. Speed is how fast you punch, or how consecutive your punches are, and of course defense is uh, for blocking. It's not exactly crystal clear how stamina and defense play up against each other, if, if stamina helps defense, if speed helps power, or if they're not interconnected at all, but the fact is, it doesn't matter because higher defense and stamina means you can take more damage, uh, higher power and speed means you can dish out more damage and quicker. Now the trick in the game, especially for later levels, for later fighters that you have to fight, is speed. You have to have speed. When you're fighting a fighter who is really fast, you will not be able to land a punch. This is because, of course, obviously he's faster than you, but, but also be because uh, the computer is really tough. The computers get progressively tougher as you play. And they have computer reaction time. It's just a blink of a second. They can duck down, they can duck up, they can punch you. The computer will beat you in the speed department every time. That's why you have to outsmart the, uh, outsmart the computer and you have to have speed. Your speed has to be either equal to or greater than that of the computer if you wish to get past, say, the seventh or eighth fight in your professional career. Now, the game is also great because of the career. You can basically have an actual career, and this is really amazing for, again, a Genesis game from the early 90s. You pick everything from what you look like to whether you're right-handed or left-handed. You pick your starting uh, four statistics, what you want to focus in on, if you want to be strong, fast, or a little bit of everything. And then you're thrown into your fights, and as you rack up wins, you uh, 
have to fight tougher and tougher competition until you get to Evander Holyfield. And don't don't think that just because Evander Holyfield is the only uh, you know actual fighter in the game that he's the only tough one. Like I said, the game gets progressively tougher. The first five or six fights are fairly easy when you know what you're doing. If you have your strategy down, like for example, my favorite strategy is to go in for the body early. I just uh, attack the body, attack the body. When my opponent can't take any more uh, body hits, I do uppercut from lower stance. I, I go right fastly to upper stance with my uppercut and then knocks him up in, in the chin and he has to back away. And I do this basically with every fight. Of course, there are uh, different strategies for different fighters. For example, a fast fighter, a tough fighter, you got to wait for him to punch himself out. You got to take a few, you got to take, you know, basically a storm of punches, a hail of punches, and then you counter with a few punches and back away. And uh, this is actually a strategy that I use for most really hard fights, including Evander Holyfield. And it works pretty well, but it doesn't work always. Like I said, the game gets really, really hard, and you got to be really good, and you got to know what you're doing to be able to beat people like Evander Holyfield or even the guys that are a little, a little lower than him in the uh, difficulty spectrum. Now, uh, probably the only problem I can think of in this game is the fact that Evander Holyfield is the only real boxer you can fight. There's actually an, an, uh, another game that uses this game's basic engine, which I might review later on, maybe in a week or so, which, um, which uses a whole bunch of different fighters. You know, it uses uh, uh, Ali, Holyfield, you know, all, all the greats from all the different eras, and you can fight all of them. Uh, that game is actually, although it uses um, all these great fighters and this game only has Holyfield, it's a little inferior to this game. And I'll explain when I review that game. But uh, all you need to know in this game is that it's absolute quality and the only bad part about it is, of course, the fact that there's only one real fighter, Holyfield. All the other uh, opponents are basically man-made CPUs that have never really fought. In between fights, you upgrade your fighter by focusing on different training regimens. They vary from cycling, uh, running, uh, you know, just sparring in the ring or whatever, basically anything you can do. Now the great thing about this is you just choose what you're gonna do and your stat goes up. In a lot of fighting games, I'm talking like UFC, uh, Fight Night, they actually make you tediously perform actions in these uh, training sessions, and it's annoying. It might be fun as a little mini game once in a while, but after every fight, it just gets ridiculous. I mean, if you if you've played the career mode in UFC 2010, you know how ridiculous it is. How, how many times you have to spar over and over to get to get maximum benefit? It's absolutely unnecessary, and it's true for like most fighting games, realistic fighting games, boxing or MMA that have a career mode. And uh, I'm glad that in this game they did it right. It came before all these games, and you know, basically the grandfather of all these new age uh, boxing and MMA games did it right, and all these new games do it wrong, you know. So, uh, yeah, it, it, that's another really great part of the game. And like I said, the strategy is what makes this game. you got to come up with your own strategy. My favorite strategy is to go for the body early on. It actually pays off to go for the body early on because it also wears down your opponent. Now, in the actual fight, you have your face meter and your body meter. You hit the body too much, and the opponent's body just has no more defense, and they, the, they stop the fight. Or you can knock someone out by continually punching them in the face. Either way, it's going to be a knockout or a technical knockout. And, of course, you got to remember there's a 10 count, so you're not always going to knock someone out just because they are knocked down. Sometimes in between fights, you'll get a little message from Evander Holyfield himself, and it's a little creepy. I mean, look at this here. Hmm, this kid looks like he has some potential. I mean, he's standing there, uh, there's lights behind him, so I'm assuming it's some kind of club, and he's shirtless, and he's all, like, greasy or sweaty, and he's got that thin mustache. 
It's like he's in a gay club hitting on me. So this is Evander Holyfield's real deal gay club boxing. Like I said before in the beginning, if you're interested in purchasing uh, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim or Uncharted 3, you can go ahead and actually click the two Amazon links below and you can either purchase or pre-purchase both of these games from Amazon. I use Amazon all the time and uh, it's just safe and fast and I like it better than any place that sells games. So thanks for watching this game review. Another game review coming up real soon. Goodbye, my friends, and uh, happy fighting. You definitely got to check this game out. If I actually find a copy of this game on Amazon that I can, uh, I can advertise, then I'd, I'll absolutely include it in my next uh, game review because this is absolutely a game that you should have and you should play. Goodbye, my friends.